Hi guys, I am DDK, Didi Kuzwayo. I'm an entertainer, television and radio personality. I started a series of questions that people ask me on Facebook where they want to know how I've transitioned from 2018 and to where I am today, professionally and personally, because I'm a person that deals with a lot of um, negativity. Uh, so I gave people on social media the opportunity to ask me questions um, based on what I've been through and how I've transitioned through everything. And I'm just going to read to you one of the emails that, um, that was sent to me. Hi, Didi. Thank you for allowing the opportunity to ask questions. Please see mine below. So I've been following you on social media since around 2014 or so. And in that time, I have seen you go through a lot of challenges very publicly. This includes fights with your family, people always trying to ridicule you, etc. But you have really stuck to who you are and you seem to be growing into a well-grounded person. This is basically the reason for me shooting this video. I feel like everything that we put on social media, you literally don't know who's watching. Everything you put on social media, there might be someone or five other people going exactly through Lando Okuyo at that time. And so I've decided to, you know, shoot this video to advise, to guide, to share with other people who've been through what I've been through. Na Isuka, Ekai, families are, oh, families are the pets. Families are the pets. You are so lucky and so blessed if you have a family that is not full of drama, that is not judgmental, that is not. I know Amakaya Wafani, Amakaya Awafani, for example, it's just me, my mom, my son, my daughter, and um, my younger sister. Those are the people that I take as my family. Abantu Banga Pandle, that are distant, I don't really count them as my family because we have, we've come to a place where I lost my father in 2010 and that's from then on I was able to build you know and know who to trust and know who to call my family so losing my dad 2010 um having to just be me and my mom you know there was there was no family that did anything to help us maybe financially the first year after your parents has passed has been it's the most difficult year for the one parent that's left behind um from then on the world doesn't owe us anything anyway but i believe that everyone deserves a break since Lord went then now boom bam ba boom gam again you can command the sandal you know fell pregnant in two thousand and fifteen. Um me and the father of my child had differences. I was about three months pregnant. I packed my things and left Durban. I came home to Mtata. Um there was a rumor that he isn't the father of my child. Um, for him, hearing something like that coming from my hometown, I think it was very easy to believe because we all sit in circles. Umtata is a very small town. We all sit in circles and everyone always knows what's happening in the, in the other person's business. So I think that's why it was so easy for him to, you know, believe such um, a rumor. He's never asked me about it. He never, you know, came through, asked for a DNA test or anything like that. So I became a single parent. I raised my son with my mom. Um, 2016, a month before I was about to give birth, my mom suffered a stroke. I think um, the cause was stress. Grown-ups grown -ups take on a lot. And they might not cry in front of us, but behind closed doors, they take on a lot. So my mom had a stroke. She was sick. I had a newborn. My sister was a teenager. 2017, I stopped throwing a pity party for myself. I was like, I need to get up. I need to pick myself up and I need to do something. So I went back into hosting events. Um, rough entertainment we had. We had Dogotella team. You know, we had Soul Fire. 
these people worked with me these are people i know so whenever they needed a video to be shot or an event to be hosted they hit me up that's how i made my few cents keba plastic Two thousand and seventeen, two thousand and eighteen. I left Joburg to try, you know, find a better dream, chasing the life, chasing the dream. It was very difficult. It was very difficult, but I met people that made the journey bearable. Ida Marolong, Eva Modiga, you know, these people would call me or hit me up on Instagram. Did he come through to Sankai or did he come through to Olympus or whatever and come and host with me? You know, I'd always bring something home. It wasn't, it wasn't an easy journey, but from all those things, uh, I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change a thing. I met the love of my life in 2018. I wasn't sure then, but I'm sure now. <laughs> I wasn't sure then, but I'm sure now. A lot has happened since I've met him as well um, in our relationship, in regards to our relationship and the people around us and how it's affected my friendships with a lot of friends, you know, from me being always available to groove, to party and go out, but transitioning into being a serious, you know, girlfriend that asks or tells her man where she's going and whatever. But we'll get more into detail as the videos progress i just want to go into the questions now what kept you going even when you felt like giving up because i know for sure that we do go through life challenges where you feel like giving up and what is the one thing you're grateful for what kept me going is my kids my kids kept me going um it's my responsibility as a parent to make sure everything for them is good there's a legacy left behind you know and my younger sister my younger sister looks up to me i'm literally a role model to her and and that's no it's a smooth sailing but i always you know think about them more than anything um but one thing i'm grateful for is strength i think that's one of the qualities of myself that i fall in love with over and over and over again the strength I have is is amazing. Sometimes it doesn't talk on them. Professionally, how do you amend yourself when emotionally broken? Would you recommend another person to do so? Oh, it's so difficult going through something and having to go to work. So what I do is I vent. Venting works for me. So the second question is, what is your biggest regret in your life so far? I don't have regrets. I don't have regrets. I honestly feel that I had to do everything that I had to do in order for me to be where I am today. Um, if you were to relocate for a job to another country, would you leave your babies? Yes. It wouldn't be easy, but... When you relocate to another person, obviously, there's no stability. Kids need stability. They need consistency and stability. So if I were to relocate to Atlanta, for example, I would not up and take my babies to the U.S. with me. I'd have to first establish myself, you know, and build a home of consistency and stability around me before even considering bringing my babies over. Baby number two challenges. All the attention um i i raised my first child alone so all the attention i'm getting now from my second child is a bit overwhelming for me uh, everyone is just here yeah, and i feel like everyone is just in my business they're not invading uh, you know it's just that i'm not used to having all that love and you know all that care and attention shown to me so that's the only thing I'm, uh, I'm dealing with. Other, everything else is just perfect. Um, oh, my gosh. If you are given an opportunity to redo the past two years, is there anything you would change? No. No. Maybe if I was going through a certain thing at that time, but right now, I wouldn't redo anything. I feel like 
I've been through those things for a certain reason and in order for me to become the person I am today. So I wouldn't change a thing. How has the change influenced your decision making and what's the biggest lesson you've learned in the transition period? Always keep the faith. Always keep the faith. Even though at that period or at that moment you feel ba hey, this is it for me. Every day is a new feeling, it's a new step to a better person, a better healing, you know. Guys. Top three on my bucket list. I don't know if it's destinations or things I like doing, but traveling, traveling, um, financial stability, and my career booming. I can't really feel like I'm so I'm going to go back here, guys. So, personally, how do you handle all the negative rumors about me? And professionally are you still going to pursue your radio career you guys all know that i was in the true talent search um yeah i had the fighting spirit i do not give up and guys i i Yo guys, tinga tino kya, tina stress ba. Yo abantu ba tingam. Ever since I started um being with Olutando, I I have a new way at 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 looking at rumors. Rumors don't bother me. I don't care what you say. For me, what's important is what I think of myself as a person. Na diazas. So why should I now do something in order to please you? So if you say this and I prove you wrong, I'm not doing it for me anymore. I'm doing it for you. Yo, guys, I think that's enough questions for today. Those are the questions that I want to address. And um, thank you guys for tuning in. You will see me next time. <laughs> and whatever video love you like. Those are enough questions for today. You can follow me at DDK on Instagram and Television Evolution on Twitter. At Yanga Didi Kuzwayo on Facebook. And I'll expect more questions coming from you guys. If you follow me on those social media platforms, then you guys will be able to DM me your questions for the next video. And what else you'd like for me to share about your life. This is In The Light with DDK.